All right, Craig, you bowled with all of us at Nationals. Obviously, you know, you're an integral uh, piece to Virtue. How was your team experience versus your doubles and singles experience? Yeah, um, it was good. So I didn't, I bowled actually my worst all events I've ever bowled. Um, but the amount that I bowl has decreased substantially uh, since I've had kids. Uh, I still had a lot of fun. And of course, the knowledge side of it, you never lose. You just, if you don't practice, you lose the execution part, which is definitely what I was lacking. But team event for me was definitely easier. I felt like I could have put up a much better number. I struggled with pin carry. But team event, I also was very limited in my arsenal. So for those of you that might follow me on social media, uh, my bowling balls didn't get there in time due to the snow and weather delays. And so I had to go to the booth and I drilled two balls, a uh, purple hammer and the new widow. And the, widow, uh, the purple hammer was great at uh, on the fresh switch to the widow the widow was great but i rang a lot of 10 pins and often all the times they were on a single they were like strike nine spare so uh but yeah for me team was easier uh maybe a couple feet longer but definitely just a lot more shape it seemed like the ratio wasn't as flat um for team event as singles and doubles singles and doubles just felt hard especially if you're out of practice and, and not very sharp you had your equipment back for singles. I did, I did, yeah. It didn't, it didn't help much, but uh, I at least felt like I had all the tools. I could change balls, and there was a couple times I changed balls and would put together a string to try to, you know, at least ball a little better score, but um, they just seemed a lot flatter, and you really had to be really sharp for singles and doubles. I would definitely recommend people, singles and doubles I think is really hard to create room with like ball choice or layout, at least for the league bowler. I would go into singles and doubles with, you know, what's the part of the lane that you're the most confident in that you can really repeat shots uh, at a higher level um, and then just try and find the right ball within there. But the higher priority is just getting comfortable to be able to repeat because the lane just doesn't give you much. I had some swelling issues and stuff like that. What would you recommend to people traveling with the, you know, any sort of elevation, weather, sure, yeah. a big stadium like that? What's a, a tip or a trick that you would give to somebody that, that starts struggling with that? as soon as practice is over? So. It's, it's a good question. I would say once you get to the point where you're traveling with your bowling, bowling in different houses, especially different environments in different states, uh, interchangeable thumbs are the way to go. Uh, to expand on that even further, there's not only one system. So if you've only used one system in the past and it's failed or you didn't like it, there's a lot of different options out there now. And typically, if you fail a certain way with one system, there's another system that kind of uh, solves those problems um, and so inter interchangeable thumbs is really the best option. For spares, hooking or throwing them straight, I know that's a hot topic <laughs> amongst especially league bowlers, I, you know, yeah. Uh, but there I felt like you could hook it, it just kind of depended but any recommendations on that front? Or Yeah, strategies? yeah, so I, ironically enough I've spent my whole life, I'm a big believer in a polyester ball, straight and hard, I shoot all my spares exactly the same, whether it's 34 feet, 52 feet, house shot, whether I'm bowling in, you know, a Europe or here, you know, it just doesn't matter. So I've always loved that strategy. That's what I would always recommend. Uh, this nationals for me, because I didn't have my spare ball, I actually tried to go straight at first and the ball hooked and I missed it. And my entire team was like, why didn't you hook at that? It was on the left-hand side of the lane. And so I listened to them. I started hooking at my spares on the left-hand side of the lane at team event. I didn't miss another one. So uh, shout out to my teammates for the, uh, the ball repping skills. But in general, um, going straight and direct at your spares, taking the pattern out of play is always what I recommend. You, you've been bowling with your team. You're on Matt's team at Nationals. You guys have been bowling a long time. You guys have had a lot of success this year. Was, was there anything just more special about this year than other years? Uh, it's a good question. So this was definitely one of the top years. There was a year that we put up another uh, pretty high score to the point that we were featured in the live stream the next year. Um, and that year, uh, Laughlin and, uh, and Miguel, I believe, also bowled 300. That year was pretty special. I also killed them in brackets pretty good. <laughs> Uh, so that year was pretty cool. This year was really cool because we got to leave first, but we were opening weekend, so, but we did put up a good number. Uh, but this year was also special because it's kind of a transition point for me in bowling, kind of moving from a competitor to kind of like an ambassador or a community role. And so it was really cool to bowl with my dad in doubles. You know, I'm moving away from like the really competitive teammates and bowling with my pops uh, and just having a good time with him. And then 
Uh, you know, the work that Jen Peterson did with our Virtue team, you know, with having 60 people there, it was just really cool to see all the shirts and everybody that's a part of Virtue in some way, whether they are just a customer, whether they work for us, or they're just a believer in what we're trying to do. It was, it was super cool. Did you have a favorite meal or anything like that? Matt kept saying trash food, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I enjoyed the food. Did you have a favorite meal or favorite thing that we did outside of, of bowling? Um, yeah, uh, I got, we went to, I think a breakfast joint in Silver Legacy, I think. I went with my pops and I work a lot. He works a lot. He's also a bit of a hermit. So um, I would say the food was pretty good. I had, a, I had some biscuits and gravy, but it was mainly just cool to be able to sit down and, and hang out with my dad for a while and, and reconnect. Um, I did appreciate the nachos that were like in a little kiosk behind the Bowler's Journal section. So if you're there and they're still there, check out the nachos. Th those, those actually were surprisingly good. All right, so, so okay, that, that brings up just one, one additional question. The nachos there or the South Point hot dog? Oh, the not the nachos there. The South the South Point hot dog, I hot take. I think it's just a convenience element. I mean, <laughs> like the idea that like a hot dog and just a bun is like, you know, mind blowing. I think it I think it's convenient. The price is amazing and for bowlers, convenience and price is like where our hearts at. But flavor wise, definitely not close. Definitely the nachos. Boy ain't no way, boy. Boy ain't no way, boy.